All right, hello everyone. I guess I'll go ahead and start off uh, about who I am and, and what I'm doing here today. So my name is Michael Brown. I go by the alias Mega Mike Jr. And the reason why is because uh, if you go Google search Michael Brown, more than likely you're not going to find him. It's like it's like Tom Brady trying to win the Super Bowl against him, right? So I actually um, am part of a uh, trucking logistics company. I work as the SEO manager for them, and I am a site consultant. That I do a lot of digital marketing for. So today's topic is going to be on market reporting and automation. And if you guys are here for April's talk on SEO, this is going to be beneficial because it's a great segue as to what you can do to um, evaluate your data, the data she's talking about, and actually spend more time optimizing rather than reporting on it. So this is an excellent uh, topic, and I think you guys are going to get a lot of it. At the bottom left-hand corner is my Twitter handle. So make sure you go on Twitter and. Check me out. Make sure to follow me. Use WC Jacks. Um, give them a little credit as well. And you can go to megamikejr.com forward slash WC Jacks. Uppercase or lowercase. It's a vanity URL. Doesn't matter. Um, you guys can find it. I'll give you some informational information, some helpful stuff that's going to be um, covered in this slide presentation. So the talk, the intent for today. What am I going to be talking about? The definition or, or the intent of today is kind of a lengthy one, so I'm just going to read it real quick. It's to help WordPress users uh, leverage the power of data to identify and determine next steps and to not only bring in qualified traffic to your website, but aiding and converting them into customers and or leads. Who here doesn't sell something or actually convert someone from your website? None of you, right? So you're all pretty much converting someone and doing something that's going to allow you to uh, make money off of them, correct? Uh, Excellent, so I'm talking to the right audience. Um, so another word for user, I just like to throw this out there, is junkie and addict. All of us here at WordCamp, we are addicts and junkie. So make sure when you go to my Twitter handle, uh, comment on one of the photos that I posted on there as to which one you think you are. Are you a user, are you a junkie, or are you an addict when it comes to WordPress? Because I love to hear feedback from you guys. It helps, helps feed the presentation at the moment. So items of interest, some things that were covered and talk, uh, talked about a lot through the different work camps here, and even during this work camp, um, are things such as Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager, Google Search Console, which April covered. She, co she called it Webmaster Tools. It is also called Search Console. Campaign tracking, if you've ever heard of UTM, tracking URL tracking parameters. Those are all things that are covered. Google Sheets, it's great. It's Excel, um, Google's version of Sheets. And CRM data, if you guys are integrating into a website, and say, for instance, you're using Salesforce, you're using HubSpot, you're using something that's gathering these leads and actually doing something with them in a repository for your clients. So these are things that you want to keep in mind when you're talking about reporting on. So you know what you're tracking as far as conversions. And when I'm saying leads, for example, contact form 7 carries leads. So you're, you're actually uh, collecting email addresses. MailChimp is one. You're collecting email addresses. Um, engagement, action items, getting social shares. Those are all micro and macro conversions on your site. So you want to report on them effectively, right? And after you report on them, create an automated process in which you can actually do something with that data. So this is what this topic is about today, and I hope that you guys can kind of tie everything together and make sense of it all. So the what, right? Uh, what are we going to be talking about today? Uh, there are two instances where um, market reporting and automation will help you become successful in WordPress. There's two user bases, really. That's through self-awareness and data transparency. So everyone here probably has their own WordPress site or they're an agency selling this as a service. So with market reporting and automation, being self-aware, knowing how your data is performing for you, is extremely valuable for you as an individual and in making sure that you're bringing the right qualified traffic to your site, but also converting them. Um, in the same sense, data transparency, when you're an agency, for example, and you're selling WordPress as a product or service, and uh, you're making money off of it, it's helpful to allow the customer to see how their website's doing through automated reports so that they understand that what they're buying into is actually beneficial to them and useful. That there's something that they can continue to, uh, to operate and grow with. So there's two, two instances, and I hope that you guys understand that with data, there's always pros and cons to it. A lot of agencies in the past, when it comes to using WordPress, they, they take the, kind of the concept of, I'm going to pick and choose the data I'm going to show my customers. Because with that data, I can make my own. And make, it's kind of like statistics, for example. You can make statistics go either direction you want. When it comes to your website's performance, it's the same way. So having that data transparency as an agency through market reporting and automation 
is going to assist all of you guys in making sure that you're successful as not only an agency, but as an individual if you're putting your websites together effectively. So WordPress, right? Um, who, who remembers the old adage, if you build it, they will come, right? Well, when you build a website in WordPress, and you're not actually monitoring successes of it, and you're not actually optimizing your WordPress site effectively, it's like building a hotel in the middle of the desert. So no one knows it exists. You don't know how people, people don't know how to get there. So taking the data that's coming in, if there is any data, and identifying how to optimize it for better performance, bringing the qualified traffic to your place of business, is key and essential to success. So that's really what I wanted to get out of it. I hope you guys got that out of a few slides, because the rest of it's going to be very, uh, very informative and helpful. So the how. So we're all about making money, and there's tons of roadblocks when it comes to making money. Who here isn't about making money with WordPress? Is there anybody in this room that isn't about making money with WordPress? No, you're probably either doing one or two things. You're bringing in information or, or users to collect information and learn from your information, um, and hopefully converting them as a, as a service or a product, um, or you're actually an e-commerce system and actually doing direct sales. Well, there's something to say today for that, and it's a very, very powerful tool called Data Studio. It's a Google product. It's uh, a beta version uh, right now. Uh, and it's, it's, it's kind of like, well, next time we'll probably tell you. There's plenty of definitions online that talk about what Data Studio is and how you can use it to, to benefit yourself and your clients. Um, but I like to say it's like Excel had a, if Excel and, and PowerPoint had a baby, it would be Data Studio. Yeah. OK? <laughs> so yeah, in this instance, I'm talking Google Sheets and Google Slides, because it's, it's a Google product. So, uh, I like to define it as if Excel had a baby with PowerPoint, uh, that's what it would do. Basically, it has all the, the design aspects to it, but it has the full functionality of pretty much Excel. So you're able to take it, do something with it, form, formulate it in a way that's beneficial to your business, and actually optimize and do stuff on your website that's going to help you. Um, some of the biggest issues I've seen, if you're using, say for instance, uh, Google Analytics. Google Analytics is a huge uh, powerhouse of a tool. It's got tons of fields and variables that are coming and flowing into your website. I think it's well over 900, right? It's very, it's built to be universal in a sense, all the way from the large e-commerce websites to the very granular blog. So when you look at it from that aspect, trying to dissect data in Google Analytics, it's very cumbersome. So that's why they provided you with Data Studio. You can take the data that you're collecting from your analytics, unstructured data, import it into Data Studio very seamlessly, and actually do something. In other words, build charts out that represent your business model, your goals, your objectives. If you're a blogger, you can easily build out how my content's doing. If you're an e-commerce system, an e-commerce platform, I can build out how successful are my sales and what products are performing. So that's kind of the gist of this, but I'm going to get into more granular and more depth on what Data Studio is and how it can help you all. And you guys can stop me if I'm talking too fast. I was watching some of the presentations and I feel like I needed to talk a little quicker to get as much of this information in. So, uh, yeah, just raise your hand and say, slow down, slow down, you're talking too much. So, what are you providing? Are you a, a site with information? Are you providing a product or service? Or are you actually trying to make sales online? This is all about the business goal and objective of your website and what you're going to do with it from a WordPress perspective. How many of you have seen uh, the sales plan? And have you guys seen sales funnels? So you guys know that there's a path users take. When we say users, there's a path junkies take to your website um, that they take for uh, the sales cycle. So in other words, if you're trying to get them to actually share a blog article, for example, there's a path they take to do that. There's a path they take to go to your website and actually convert if they're purchasing a product, say it's a t-shirt. There's always a path. So data that you collectively pull together and say, for instance, analytics is it going to help you dissect that information. It's going to help you evaluate it in more depth, but it's not always going to give you exactly what you need. Google's Data Studio is going to be able to help you formulate that story. It's going to help you formulate that, that sales cycle in a way that's going to allow you to make decisions quicker without having to worry too much about dissecting that data. And again, like I just mentioned, it's basically geared to gain more customer insight. So who are my customers? What are they doing on my site? How do I become more effective in building a relationship with my customers? In other words, I don't want to build one article, one blog on my WordPress site, and hope that converts only once. I want them to come back continually. 
I want them to, to, to consume my data routinely, right? So if I'm continually um, evaluating the data and not focusing too much time on reporting on the data, I can spend more time optimizing for better performance for my blog articles. If I'm writing, that's perfect. So how much time on page, right? How are my users consuming this? Do I have a high bounce rate? Where are they entering into my website? Where are they exiting in my website? That's so you can build a better customer experience and a customer relationship uh, with your users. This is Data Studio. Uh, basically, as you enter it, you can go to datastudio.google.com. And uh, basically, that's the dashboard. And it gives you tons of functionality and capability. Uh, they give you some sample reports up here that you can start off with, so you can understand how you can actually build things out. So in other words, if you want to say, for example, this is a Google Analytics sample data set. So if you want to see how Google Analytics integrates into Data Studio, you can go to Data Studio here, <coughs> click on that guy, because it's on every single body's basically personal um, email address, Gmail address, and dissect how that data is included. Or you can do it here for search content. So she mentioned something about search console. If you want to see what <coughs> the words people are using to find your site, go ahead and make, well, you have to make sure your, your search console is set up correctly first. But if you do have it set up correctly, you can connect the dots for the data source and see what, what keywords people are using on what pages and then see how that's performing. The other thing you can do is if you're leveraging PPC, and again, these are all Google products, because this is, again, Google Data Studio, um, you want to see how AdWords is performing. There's a sample set there. So they can give you things like, am I getting good click-through rates? Right? Or how many impressions am I getting? Um, how much is it costing me? That's probably one of my favorite ones. I, I don't want to spend too much money if there's no conversions. right? So those are good things to evaluate and continually looking at uh, when building these reports out. And I want to get into a little bit of how easy it is to build these out, because it's, it looks kind of frightening at first when you look into it, when you actually go into these, and you see all these things happening on the back end. But literally, Google made it very seamless for you to integrate these things. So anyone can do it. It's basically like downloading Yoast and, and updating Yoast to make sure that you're optimized for search from a contents perspective. So connectivity. So there are a variety of different tools that you can use in Data Studio that connect. And we call them the connectors, right? So uh, seamlessly, we have Google Analytics, Search Console, Sheets, Google Sheets, AdWords, and YouTube, to name a few. Um, those are uh, direct influences on Google Data Studio, meaning that they work hand in hand. There's no custom integrations and third party integrations. All you have to do in there is go and connect with your Gmail address and your set. That's assuming that you have Google Analytics set up, whether you have Google Search Console set up, and AdWords and so forth. You have others that are uh, a little more cumbersome that do require third party integrations. You can do MailChimp for your email marketing, you can do CallRail for your phone tracking if you have CallRail. In other words, I want to know how many phone calls am I getting from my website. They have call tracking systems for that. Uh, Stripe, so that your merchant accounts, if you're using, like, for example, a WooCommerce and you want to know how many sales and transactions will be performed for that, you can easily set that up. Miles and SimRush are some of your uh, kind of your data analysis tools. So from a keywords perspective, if you're doing some search engine optimization, you can easily import those and manage them and see what you can do with the data to make your site better. Um, and the third-party integrations that I, I use personally are called Supermetrics. Supermetrics, if you don't find anything that's traditional and or default in Google Data Studio and you want to connect to other things, Supermetrics is a great third-party connectivity. Um, there's tons of very, very valuable information. For example, I use it personally with Bing ads. Obviously, Google and Bing do not work hand-in-hand -hand together. Google actually hates the fact that there's an integration, I'm sure, uh, with Supermetrics to connect to the data studio. But you can evaluate that data just, much, just as much as you can on the AdWords side as you can with Bing, and even do it in the same report. So all of your PPC campaigns, for example, you could build one report, put all of your, your AdWords, all of your Bing, all of your Facebook ads, everything in one seamless report that illustrates how much money you're spending and how much return you get. Um, and even if you weren't spending any money, even if you weren't uh, buying into these third-party connectors, which, by the way, that's a free version. You, there's a free version of Supermetrics you can get. There's also paid. Even if you're not doing a lot of stuff, there's plenty of opportunity on the free side on Google Analytics and Search Console to optimize your website. So here's just a, to name a few Supermetrics, right? 
So we have Facebook ads, like I mentioned. You have Instagram. So if any of you guys do social media marketing and want to dissect it a little further, you can connect these devices, whether it's through the social paid or if it's organic. Um, you have, again, LinkedIn, MailChimp. You have Reddit, Pinterest, Tumblr, Stripe, uh, Vimeo. Tons of platforms that you guys can use. So they're all third-party integrations that allow you to dissect this information a lot more. So again, um, there's actually something I wanted to mention that April said in her presentation. And this presentation is about spending less time reporting and evaluating data and more time seducing Google and other marketing channels. So if you guys were talking with April on that last presentation, she mentioned everything about seducing Google and how you should do that through search. This is what's going to help you do that. Because traditionally, analytics is not that great of a tool universally. It covers a lot of ground. But if you want to get more in tune with how your website and your WordPress is performing, Data Studio is the way to go. And building these reports out is as seamless as building a PowerPoint presentation, as you see today. <coughs> you have a couple other ones if you wanted to get even more in depth with some of the paid platforms out there. There's tons of information on these. I, so, I strongly suggest you go to supermetrics.com, check out their data studio service section, and even sign up for the free one, see how the integrations work. Free is always good, right? Especially when you don't have to pay for it. You can try it. And, and try out before you ever do anything. So connecting a data source. It sounds kind of crazy, right? What do I do to connect a data source to Google's Data Studio? Very easy to do. So I go, I go to the Data Studio site, and I click on Data Sources. And it's going to give me a list of data sources. And in that list, I'm going to click on which one I want. And then I can connect to it seamlessly once my account's connected. Basically, your account is all automatically connected once you log into Data Studio because it's a Gmail address. So once you've logged in and you saw, you've already set up your, say, for instance, your Google Analytics from your WordPress website, and you go to your data source, you're going to see your, your property views once you've authorized it to actually connect to Google Analytics. And once you do that, you're able to see now a ton of other information that allows you to do that. Um, one of the things to note here is Supermetrics isn't the only third-party integration. There's, a, there's a, a series of them that's full, I, I wouldn't say infinitely, but there's a ton of third-party integrations for Data Studio if you're looking into other ideas as far as how to best consume my data and what to do with it. Again, this is about reporting on it in an automated fashion that's going to help you be successful with your work best um, We'll talk about, um, for example, here. There's 909 fields in this example, so this one scroll, scrolls pretty infinitely. So when I connect a Google Analytics data source to my data studio report, I'm first creating the data source because I have to connect it, right? So I'm, I'm building the bridge. So once I build a bridge, it's going to give me a ton of fields. And all these fields are automatically imported into Google Analytics once you set up your Google Analytics on your WordPress site. So when you install a script or you, say, for instance, download a plugin that, that ties your, your Google Analytics account to your WordPress system, you're already collecting all this information. So this is, all, this is what I call all unstructured data. So there's 909 fields of unstructured data that comes into your Google Analytics that you can do something with. So you can basically make it work for you. So there's, I could give tons of examples. For example, um, unique purchases. If you have a, a purchase on your website, right, you can see unique purchases on, in your Google Analytics, but you can also see where the fields come in. So if you want to dissect that a little further, you can do functions and variables on that that allow you to build out custom data studio reports based off of the sales. But all this is standard, so you don't need to necessarily know how to do custom functions or any of that. You can easily import them and do something with it as far as building out graphs, whether it be a pie chart or a line graph, or even a table set. If you want to see how, like basically all the pages that I have, which one actually brings in value to my website. Am I converting them on uh, my blog, through my blog, or am I converting them to the internal pages I'm It's very valuable. Here's an example of how easy it is to actually build a data studio report. Literally, it's, it's, it's plug and play. You select what you want. You, you literally um, scale how, how large you want the actual graph. And it pulls in, um, by default, the generic information from your, your analytics. So, for instance, um, let's, let's kind of interact a little here. So, what kind of marketing channels do you guys look at on your website? Um, I'll give you an example. Social. Social is a marketing channel, right? 
a lot of you guys don't do email marketing, right? A lot of you guys may get some email marketing stuff on your website, but all you really want to report on is the things that you focus on. So you can tell Google State Studio what you want to look at and what you do not want to look at through a series of, of filters. So at first, it's going to give you everything that you've already witnessed on Google Analytics. And then you can go even further in that second edification and actually reporting on stuff that's meaningful. Here's a little more of a breakdown on, on how Data Studio works from a user experience perspective or a UI. So here's all of the data sources on the side. I don't know if you guys can see this, it may be a little green, but here's all the data sources on the side in this kind of field, the field set here. And you have your dimensions in your, in your metrics. So in other words, your source. For example, would be your dimension, meaning that where's the source of the information. Some people will say that's Facebook, some people say that's Google, um, maybe it came in organically, whatever it is you want to report on. And you can select how you want that to be displayed once you build up your graphs and the line, line charts or your pie charts. Um, you can easily create other pages associated with Google Play Studio. So you can literally have with the presentation multiple pages, multiple levels of reports. Uh, that you give to your customer, or you have personally, uh, and you actually want to do something with it. And you can also take your data studio report and make it share. So what I mean by that is, if you don't want to give them access to actually being able to manipulate your reports once you've built it, you can get them shared view access, much like you would a Google Doc or Google Sheet or whatever it is you're building, and they only have view access. So they can actually dynamically view and filter out how they're doing the reports. So in other words, if you wanted a second opinion on your website, and you built these data studio reports out, you can send it to a developer or a marketing agency and say, hey, what can you do for me if this is the data that I have? So they have insight as to what you're doing without giving them Google Analytics access. Google Analytics asset access basically says, hey, um, figure it out. I, I want you to figure out what I want to report on. And this is an instance where you can say, this is what I want to report on, but this is what I'm getting. So in other words, I'm not getting as many clicks or conversions. Or I'm not getting enough traction on things that are kind of building and working on uh, vigorously. How do I improve that? What do I do? Like, those things are going to help you. So again, what to report on? Here's, here's a really good one. So since to save time and energy and money on reporting on things that matter to you, this typically falls within your goals and objectives as a business. So am I, am I more concerned with the number of users that come to my website? Is bounce rate versus time on page something that I want to focus on? Right? Keywords, for example, through Search Console. What is my CTR? What are my clicks? What are my impressions? You guys remember listening to, to April when she was talking about, if you were here on the, in my presentation, about uh, uh, search results, the meta title of meta descriptions and search results. So I want to improve my click through rate on those keywords for people coming to my site. So, in other words, if I have 10,000 impressions, and search results, and no one's clicking on them, don't you think I can make those a little more captivating so that people will actually click through my website? Probably. Building a report out that focuses strictly on that is going to help you say, hey, I should put more time, energy, and effort into actually building those descriptions more effectively. For example, top performing pages. If I can identify what pages on my website are performing for me, don't you think I want to put a little more time and energy on the other pages to do the exact same? So maybe my, my structure of my content is easily consumable on my top performing page, which is why it's successful. Should I take that same structure and layout of that, of that page and kind of mimic that on the other pages I want to be successful in? People will have difficulty consuming information online. And if you can do something about it, which you can through good reporting, and spend less time reporting on it and actually more time optimizing it, wouldn't it be wise to actually put some time and attention to it? Device performance, for example. If your site's not performing well for you mobile, wouldn't you want to do that a little more justice by giving a little more attention as to why? Having a good report telling you why your uh, website, your WordPress site, for example, isn't getting well mobily, knowing that more mobile users are out there on the market today than there ever have been, I think that you should shed some emphasis and insight on that and actually and identify without having to dig in the Google Analytics to find it. So this is all very valuable. Paid marketing is another topic I could probably dive more into, but I think that the majority of the audience today is mostly on the organic WordPress site. Some unconventional applications. So 
some really cool stuff here, right? So Data Studio is awesome because, say for instance, you're, you're in the early stages of building a WordPress site. You're building out a business model. You're wanting to know how to target individuals. You don't know if your customers are yet. This is going to help you by, do, by doing a few things. Data Studio, remember I mentioned you can connect Google Sheets to it? Well, if you have some existing CRM data, you already have a, a, kind of a sample set of who your customers are, you can easily pull that into a data studio report and build out customer performance on who you want to target. So literally, you can connect your own personal spreadsheets to data studio in a manner that's going to be easy for you to say, hey, I want to target Joe, John Doe, or something like that, John Doe and Michigan, because I know that I have a lot of residents in Michigan who are a male between the ages of 45 and 50. Right, so you can actually pull that data into it, build out customer personas on who you want to target, and then make your messaging all about them. So even in the instance of the strategy and the performance mode, before you ever build the system out, you can easily put that stuff together to be more effective in the early stages of your business. Purchase out of time, for example. Um, so how long are people purchasing out from my, from my product? So for example, say I'm a, a booking site. People need to book on my website. How long are they booking out from if I'm doing appointment scheduling on my website? That's important to know when to target. Building seasonality. Um, April talked a little bit about Google Trends. You can also identify seasonality-wise what people are searching for from based on season, so I know when to target. So what keywords are people using to find me? Because of, and what keywords are converting, so that I can use those say next season and target those because I know there's an opportunity. Yeah. There's plenty of more. For example, browser tracking, exact mesh keywords. These are all very very more technical things, but uh, there's tons of information that you can collect in Data Studio and, and actually structuring in a way that's beneficial to you in the business. Uh, that you don't have to spend as much time actually doing something with that data and say Google Analytics. Here's another clean and remove. So you can actually filter out what you do and do not want. You can actually segment from analytics, say you can pull in segments, if you fill segments out in Google Analytics, you can actually say, hey, I don't want that information in my reports. You can wipe it out completely. Uh, you can get into functions and expressions. You can talk all about the, who we are, the about us. For example, you can convert through regular expressions, uh, certain elements. You can calculate functions. You can count as to how many things happen or occurrences on a site. So you can actually get a little more technical with it if you wanted to. But out of the box, it's equipped for the, the average user. And if you want to, I, I provided a link. So you can see some of the functions that are capable in Data Studio, much like you have Excel or Google Sheets. Here's an example of me creating a function. Uh, it's very simple. I basically say, I want, I can read it. Um, you know how many users there were per session or something of that nature. And it's literally just, it'll pull the field. Because um, it's already variable. Say, so, hey, user field divided by whatever session. Boom, it's done. It's calculating that, much like sheets. Um, here's a, a data studio report that I've created. Um, it's a website port, uh, report based on location. So all of those point clouds that you see over here, uh, each, each of those are locations, and it tells me how much uh, rental income. This is for a property management group that you do business with. It tells me how much rental income per location I'm receiving. So it tells me also on seasonality, when are they converting and what state so I know what time I need to market to them and where. So if I'm doing paid advertising, for example, I can select my pay channel because I have a drop-down filter dynamically. I can select pay out and buy everything that I'm paying for. Based on that, where should I be focusing my attention based on the amount of revenue and rental income I'm bringing in? So that alone in itself is extremely valuable and me saving time and energy and effort uh, for being successful in my, in my website. And this is a WordPress-based website. And I think uh, this one is, uh, I'm, this, this website I make $124,000 a day on, on rental income. That's $6 million in total for the year. Um, it's a very, very powerful tool. When you're having to dissect that much data, I'm talking millions and millions of sessions, uh, you don't know what to do with it until you build something out like this and actually have it presentable and easily uh, understandable. Here's another one, AdWords cost versus analytics revenue. So in other words, how much does it cost me 
in AdWords to get that much traffic, and in analytics, tell me how much revenue did I bring. So that's going to help you. Um, and I know this is probably not necessarily geared toward WordPress in particular, but you can easily take this and, and do something else with it uh, from, a, from a content management. Here's some time of day. When are, where am I, where, not only where are my conversions happening, but when are they happening? What time of day are they happening? So I can adjust what time of day I do social posts uh, on the paid side, and what time I'm actually uh, doing some paid spend on the search for Google AdWords, for example. So what time of day is working best for me actually converting these users? Bing performance. So this is just a, one of the standard templates you guys can look at. So Bing performance. It tells you how are you doing in Bing. Uh, gives you a little more insight as to some graphs and stuff on device. Gives you some top performing campaigns. Gives you a ton of information about your click-through rates per, per uh, ad group or per campaign level. Uh, Facebook, if you want to see Facebook Insights, if you're interested in social marketing and you really want to make sure that everyone that's coming to your site from a social standpoint, if they're doing well on your WordPress site, how are they doing well on your WordPress site? Tons of information here and how you can build this out, all dynamic. Everything you do is dynamic. All your filters you have control over. You have control over how these graphs are laid out. The, the formatting aspect of it you have control over. You can select what territories you want. So if you want to zero in, say, just on Jacksonville, you can actually zero down to the cities in Jacksonville, right? Or the the regions and, and everywhere around here. So you can get granular with it, very granular as to where my audience is actually coming. Um, and mobile performance, for example. This is a perfect one for mobile performance. So if you want to know how your devices are doing, this is just a custom build uh, where you have my iOS, my Android. Like, you can really dissect it per device. Um, and even browser, based on the browser, what, what browser are you using to access my site? Say, for example, you're developing a site and someone uh, has extremely high bounce rate on a specific browser, on a specific mobile device. And, but it brings in a lot of sessions. People are coming to your site for a reason, from those devices. Um, wouldn't you as a developer want to know that so that you can run tests against it from a WordPress standpoint on why this thing isn't working for me? Probably. If you can have a report built out like this, that shows that to you because it's important to you without you having to dissect Google Analytics. That's more time that you have on developing, correcting, and developing uh, the solution. Here's here's an example of how you can embed these reports. So say, for instance, you didn't want to share it with someone, but you want to embed it on your website and share it with someone. In that, in that instance, you could easily uh, take the iframe and embed code and embed it wherever you want. So you can build these reports out, embed it on your WordPress site, and give access to whoever you want to actually view this, if you didn't give them a direct link. So very simple, seamless stuff. Lots of, lots of good stuff. Um, if you've ever heard of Google's Analytics Solutions Gallery, there used to be old reports that you can download and actually look at reports in Google Analytics. So you can say, hey, um, this whole community of individuals pulled these reports together and built them, and they shared them with one another. Well, they're starting to do that a little bit in a sense with these reports, where you can actually pick and choose which one matches your business model a little better without you actually having to build in yourself by scratch. Because by scratch would mean that you have this blank slate that you'd be doing the dragging and dropping, and then trying to figure out how, that, how the data sources connect appropriately. And then you can go to datastudiogallery.appspot.com gallery, and I can share this link with you guys after the slide. Um, and that will give you all the information you know about downloading these and actually being able to work with them to make them suitable for your website. Questions on any of this stuff so far? I did save a little time if I needed to go through some of uh, kind of an example of how it works. But um, I'd like to know a little bit of feedback from you guys. Uh, maybe we can make this a little helpful for you and understand how it works best. <coughs> any questions? I have a question. I use Data Studio. They're figuring out how to do print multiple pages. Do you, have you figured that out? How to print, print the PDF to multiple pages? I have a ten page report and I have to go every single page. Okay. I personally haven't printed pages from Data Studio. Um, what I do is I automate emails out to my, my clients. So in other words, I'll make sure to send them out every month. Because if I do weekly or monthly, I'll send them an automatic email out every month that has the Data Studio link in it. 
or it's already filtered by the time, say for instance, every week, it's, every, it's the past seven days. Every month, it's the past month. So automatically, that's how you automate your reporting, is you send those out so you don't have to send them paper copies of it. They can automatically <coughs> adjust the settings to see the data a little more easy. So it sends them a link to it so they can go in and you got it. Because okay. what's going to happen is if you set the timestamp for a data studio report, say, every month, automatically when you send it to them, it's going to, it's going to revert back to the, the previous month. So say uh, January, February, February, March, <coughs> March, right? And in March, February, it sent February results. So March, come March 1st, they get an automatic email, they click on it, now it's all over the previous month. So the, the, the report is sending, the program is sending the automated email. You're not linking and sending emails. No, no. Data, that's a request that we've made. Data Studio does not have that. You have, okay. Data Studio does not have that. You have to do that yourself. And there's some plugins in which, depending on what you have, if it's Outlook, if it's uh, Gmail, there's tons of things out there that you can use that automate those emails. But that's, it saves you tons of time. I know you said there's a, a ton of data sources and I couldn't see it all, but do you happen to know off and if, um, form entries in any format or data stores like Gravity Forms or any of those? That's a good question. So that's why I mentioned Tag Manager. Okay? There's Tag Manager, there's tons of ways in which you can track those conversions on your website. And tag Manager is going to allow you to report them, report on them from analytics. So Tag Manager works hand in hand with analytics. So if you have a form that you want to track how many leads are coming through, you're going to use Tag Manager to track it, send it to analytics, and then consume it and report on it in Data Studio. So it's, there's tons of ways in which you can do it. Any other questions? Yeah. yeah. Um, will it allow you to aggregate data across multiple sources in the same report? No, unfortunately, I haven't found a way to make that work. If you're trying to aggregate tons, it, you'd have to consolidate the data into one data source. Um, as, as you can see, the Google Analytics one was 906 fields. So making sure that you have the duplications of fields is very difficult. Um, I wish it did, because, I, for example, the one report that I mentioned, about right, right here, this reason why I split these two up is AdWords cost. I would love to know how much revenue I'm actually bringing in versus how much it cost me. But I have to separate these two. This is a data source on AdWords. This is a data source on, on analytics. And the reason why is because the two aren't working seamlessly. Have you plugged the connector uh, inside Supermetrics that there's supposed to be a connector that mixes those, uh, their super connector? I haven't used that one yet, no. Is it a professional plan? Yeah. So it supposedly good. solves that, that it brings AdWords, yeah. uh, Facebook, and Analytics, and Bing all into one data source. Right. And, and uh, yeah, those things get really expensive. Yeah, yeah they, they get really expensive. I have not tried that, though. So if you're wanting to do that, you mentioned there's a connector. There's probably a connector out there that allows us to do that. Um, personally, I haven't tried it because um, most of my reports were, were built before a lot of the supermetric stuff. So um, I should look into that. It might really be beneficial. Because connecting the dots on these things, if you can in any way um, evaluate data from multiple sources and see how it's performing for your site entirely, then that's going to be super awesome without me having to, to dissect both charts. Because again, this is about automating the reporting system and actually doing something with it. In other words, optimizing rather than focusing on the data. Any other questions? I know this is a lot thrown at you. I tried to make it as um, seamless as possible with WordPress users. Because WordPress, you can do a lot with WordPress. There's tons of ways in which you can automate uh, your reporting for WordPress specifically so that you can become more successful as either a blogger or um, as a business professional. Specifically speaking to WordPress, how about a way to monitor user actions? So, right. So again, for example, uh, Tag Manager. If you're so just, whatever events are happening in WordPress, tag them. Yes, you, there there are ways in which you can tag them without Tag Manager, but I would say invest the time in learning Tag Manager rather than doing inline code, because it's at the end of the day, it's going to be far more superior than anything you can ever do. Um, the other thing, for example, Tag Manager, you can do like. Um, how, how long people are scrolling on a blog article, you know, determine the length of scroll if people are actually consuming the blog article, and then set that up as an event or an action. Say, hey, that's a micro-conversion to me, because they actually read the entire thing. And then now you can report on it in Data Studio and say, hey, I want to do more of that. What can I do to make it better? Any other questions? Yeah, I
guys. I really appreciate your time.